Okay, so we are in Galatians chapter 4, and we're going to pick it up with verse 21. Okay, so it says this. <clears throat> Tell me, you who want to be under the law, are you not aware of what the law says? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and the other by the free woman. His son by the slave woman was born according to the flesh, but his son by the free woman was born as the result of a divine promise. These things are being taken figuratively. The women represent two covenants. One covenant is from Mount Sinai and bears children who are to be slaves. This is Hagar. Now, Hagar stands for Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present city of Jerusalem because she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem that is above is free and she is our mother. For it is written, be glad, barren woman, you who never bore a child. Shout for joy and cry aloud, you who were never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband. Now you, brothers and sisters, like Isaac, are children of promise. At that time, the son born according to the flesh persecuted the son born by the power of the Spirit. It is the same now. But what does Scripture say? Get rid of the slave woman and her son, for the slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance of the free woman's son. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we are not children of the slave woman, but of the free woman. So to, make, to continue making his point of this contrast between uh, the freedom that we have as Christ followers and the bondage of trying to live under the law, in this contrast, he goes all the way back to Genesis and the birth of Ishmael and the birth of Isaac. And Paul says that he is going to take the things talked about and described in Genesis figuratively. Literally, the word there is allegory. And it means that Paul is going to interpret it as having some hidden meanings. That's what an allegory is. So he says that Ishmael was the son of the slave woman, Hagar, and that Ishmael was conceived because of an unwillingness to trust God's promise. Isaac was the son of Sarah, not a slave, and Isaac was conceived according to the promise of God. The one son was born because of a disbelief in the promise of God. God said it would happen, but it didn't happen, and it didn't happen, and it didn't happen. And so uh, Abraham had tried to manipulate and help God along because at one point he had a servant by the name of Eleazar, and he, he thought, uh, well, maybe, maybe God will just let me adopt Eleazar and let's call him my son. And God said, no, that's, that's not how I said it was going to happen. And then more years go by, and then we have Hagar, okay? And God said, no, that's not what I said. I didn't tell you to sleep with another woman, <laughs> okay? I told you that you and Sarah would have a son. And, uh, and that's what happened. They had a son, and that was the son of promise. So that is the big contrast that Paul is making here, Okay? There is disbelief in the promises of God or trust in the promises of God. And throughout the book of Galatians so far, he has been making the point that we are saved by trusting in the word of God, trusting in the promises of God. And if we don't trust in the promises of God, we'll talk about this a little bit more in a bit. If we're not going to trust in the promises of God, who are we putting our trust in? Ourselves. Our ability, in this context, our ability to obey the law. Okay, so that's the contrast. Child of promise, child of disbelief or not trusting the promise. And Paul says here that Hagar and Sarah represent two covenants. The one covenant or the one way of trying to relate to God relates to Hagar, Mount Zion, and Jerusalem in the time of Galatians. And Paul's point is that the law was given on Mount Zion, the Ten Commandments. The legalistic attitude was prevalent in Jerusalem at that time. And that the Judaizers who had come from Jerusalem to Galatia, okay, were trying to bring the Galatians back into slavery to the law. 
The other covenant, the other way of relating to God, relates to freedom and promise. And Paul says that Sarah represents the Jerusalem that is above and free. And then Paul quotes here from Isaiah chapter 54, verse 1. And in Isaiah 54, verse 1, Isaiah is prophesying about what's going to happen to the city of Jerusalem when the exiles start returning from Babylon. Because of the Babylon destruction, the city of Jerusalem had been nearly deserted. It was destroyed. The city walls were torn down. And uh, Isaiah says that when the exiles return to Jerusalem, the city is going to again thrive <laughs> and grow, and that it will have a greater glory and more citizens than the Jerusalem before the Babylonian destruction. And how this relates to Hagar and Sarah is that Hagar had gloated over Sarah when Hagar found out she was pregnant. Genesis 16, 4 says that when Hagar knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. So Hagar is the before Babylonian destruction. Gloating over Sarah. But Isaiah is saying that the after exile Jerusalem is more glorious and vibrant and populated than the previous Jerusalem. And Sarah represents the after exile Jerusalem. And that's when God stepped in and fulfilled his promise. Okay, so you had the before Jerusalem that thought it was hot stuff. Okay, and you have the after Jerusalem, which was glorious and vibrant because God said it would be. Uh, and the church, he says here, he says to the Galatians, the Jerusalem that is above is, is free and she is our mother. The church is the Jerusalem from above. The church is the greater gathering. The church is the Jerusalem that is more vibrant, more populated, more alive. Because everyone who comes to Christ and trusts the promise of God for salvation becomes a part of it. And then in verse 28, Paul points this directly at the Galatian believers. He says, now you, brothers and sisters, like Isaac, are children of promise. And just as Ishmael persecuted Isaac, so the Judaizers are persecuting the Christians. And that word means to chase after or to pursue with the intent of harming or damaging. And so Paul tells the Galatians here to do the same thing that was done to Hagar and Ishmael in the Old Testament. Drive them away. They're coming here to damage you. They're coming here to destroy you. They're coming here to try and make you no longer trust in the promises of God, but instead trust in the law. And so Paul says, drive them away. Don't put up with it. Don't tolerate them. So Paul's conclusion is that as Christians, he says, we are not to live as slaves, but we are to live as free. Verse 31, therefore, brothers and sisters, we are not children of the slave woman, but of the free woman. 